Good morning, everyone. Before we start today's service, does anyone not want to be recorded? Please unmute yourself and speak up. These services today will be recorded. Okay, very good. Thank you. Pastor Tom. Thank you, Roy. And I'm glad, Roy, that you didn't say, does anyone want to like escape Zoom and run away? Because there might be some nervous youth who would be kind of thinking along those lines, but I already cued them in that running away was not an option. So just kidding. But uh, I, I do, um, of course, want to especially thank this morning uh, the members of youth group who are uh, here leading us this morning. We had a couple of people who would have additionally been leaders, but they were... Um, uh, away at places where they could not join by way of Zoom. We are blessed. Uh, Zoom technology has allowed us this year to have one of our worship leaders, Kelsey Henninger, joining us from Florida. Uh, and, and how cool is that? You know, we, we sit here, as I was saying to the youth a bit ago, um, regretting. I, I find myself thinking, oh, it would be so much nice. It'd be so nice to be in person. And the youth and I, you know, would be sitting there in the front. We could talk back and forth if needed, that kind of thing. Uh, but how amazing is it that we are uh, able this morning to have Kelsey joining us across all those miles. And we won't get into the fact that it's been like 80 some degrees and they've been in the water and the sun is shining uh, and that that's not what's happening outside my windows or yours. But anyway, enough of that. But it is a remarkable thing and we are blessed is the bottom line far from uh, feeling woe is us, it is in fact, thank you God for the amazing ability of the technology and the people like Roy and Rachel who have helped us to embrace that. A few announcements to go over. Um, Tuesday evening, we have uh, our first planning meeting for the annual Strawberry Festival. That is at seven o'clock on Tuesday evening. It is going to be a Zoom meeting and I'll be sending out that Zoom information on Tuesday in my Tuesday slash Wednesday email that I try to send each week. That'll be coming your way, in this case, Tuesday morning. So just look for that Zoom information. It is a one-off, so it will be different from anything else, you know, Bible study Zoom, Sunday morning Zoom. It is its own thing. So be sure to watch for that in your emails. And at 7 o'clock, we'll get together. And obviously, as I note in the bulletin, one of our first things, and maybe our only thing, is going to be talking about the viability of the festival for this year come June 9. Wednesday, uh, note that as uh, we continue our Zoom Lenten study, People of the Passion, that Miss Laurie is inviting all young persons to gather at the church in person at 6.30 for Celebration Club. And speaking of in person at the church, that of course segues rather nicely into the fact that next Sunday will be our first Sunday um, since the end of November that we will be doing in-person worship once again upstairs at the church with safe space seating with masking. But for the first time, we are going to be including or laying on top of that Zoom worship as well. So Zoom worship and in-person worship will happen both at 1015 next Sunday morning. And when you Zoom in, instead of me in the lovely surroundings of my study here this morning or Judy in her living room, uh, you will instead see us leading from the church and the beauty of our worship space. There are um, a surprising number of technological challenges with that. And we feel like those of us like, like Judy and, and Roy and Rachel and other musicians, we feel like we've anticipated and, and kind of figured out answers to most of those but I have no illusions that we have them all figured out or that we can anticipate everything that may happen. So I would say um, good humor and, and grace and forgiveness <laughs> would be, as they are always good qualities for followers of Jesus, I would really, really, really commend them to you for next Sunday morning. So again, good humor, uh, grace, being you know unmerited love, positive regard, and forgiveness, because we, we no doubt may have places where we have hiccups. And what will happen is just like when we first started Zoom worship itself coming up not too long a year ago, uh, it was a learning experience. And we had some glitches along the way. 
Same will be the case for this new form. But the beauty of it is, as we do this together, this will lead us into the new normal. We're not there, but when that time does come where we're not masking anymore, um, this will continue to be what we do in worship. We will gather in person, but everyone will also have the capability if they're in Florida or wherever they may be of joining in by way of Zoom at the same time live and in person. So um, next Sunday morning at nine o'clock, we'll be doing a combination of things next Sunday starting. Nine o'clock, the adult Bible study is gonna stay on Zoom just like it has. But the other younger class is confirmation Sunday celebration and such, we will be at the, per, at the church in person. So we'll be mixing it up a little bit at 9 a.m. Book discussion group coming up on Zoom a week from tomorrow night, March 8th. Details in the bulletin, books available in the foyer on the bench underneath the bulletin board. Having mentioned next Sunday starting the Zoom and in-person combination, I would be remiss to not mention that we are looking for people to help with Zoom hosting. And that becomes critical because it becomes necessary to have those hosts be at the church starting at nine o'clock in the morning. And because it's no longer as simple a matter as say Roy or Rachel or Matt and Olivia or Maddie leading from their own home, we need to broaden the group because we cannot expect one or a couple of people to be doing that every week or every other week. That, that isn't gonna work. Not now and of course not into the, the far future. So we're looking for people, not tech geniuses, not um, you know, end all information about Zoom even, but simply people who do Zoom and are gonna be doing Zoom and people who you know, they're comfortable signing in, they're comfortable turning on their device. Um, we need those folks to please step up and form this team to help with hosting. Roy, not to put you on the spot, but have you heard, I know we had a couple of folks mm, kind of going into the, the great ask. Yes. Have you heard from? Yes, we have heard from some people and looks like we're gathering a pretty good team. Um, but still with those words, if anybody else would like to help out, please uh, please reach out to us. But we're uh, gathering a, a, a really good team. Good, 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 okay. So please, like Roy said, don't let that make you think, oh good, they don't need me. No, <laughs> no, we, we do. Because we need, we need a, a nice crew of people to have a nice rotation and not have it be burdensome to anyone. We also need people uh, who would be available to substitute. Uh, you know, Maybe at the last minute, something comes up and a Zoom host is not available. So we need some people who would be okay being called on on Saturday to, to jump in. Um, we also probably have some Zoom hosts who might not be comfortable right now being physically present at the church, but they will be when we get to the new normal. So again, we need to, we need to fill in a sizable group of people. And so please, if you've been thinking and praying about it and haven't yet done so, please get in touch with, with Roy or Rachel. And thank you for those who have. Coming down the home stretch, a couple of housekeeping items, for lack of a better term, Offering envelopes. Come next week, we're going to have a flow of people through the foyer, so we will have to rearrange things a bit with our offering envelopes. We haven't had to worry about that so far. We still have a pretty sizable number of envelopes sitting on the table there that Pat has been kind enough to, uh, you know, keep keep there and keep organized. Please, 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 if you if you think to yourself as I'm talking, you know, come to think of it, I guess I didn't get my offering envelopes. Please, we need your help. Uh, it, it's not time critical, of course, that you haven't necessarily needed them. We're not passing the offering plate like normal times, but we need to get those into your hands. And so please, please make arrangements to stop by the foyer. They'll be on probably a relocated and maybe somewhat smaller table, but they will be there in the foyer. Uh, Pat and, and I, and probably several of us over the weeks that they've been there have kind of grouped them together so they're not in alphabetical order anymore, strictly speaking, uh, or even numerical order. Uh, what we've done is we've grouped them by families. So, uh, you know, for instance, uh, you know, the, the Bruners would, would all be, you know, together um, and, and others, you know, where there are siblings and, and children, we've tried to group them together. 
So when you come to the table, just look around a little bit and you'll, you'll fairly quickly see them still kind of in alphabetical order, but then in groups that sometimes combine different letters of the alphabet because it represents one family. Help us get those out of there, please. Um, secondly, um, the front door at the church. There are times, uh, especially during these Zoom times, where uh, I need for a variety of reasons to let the front door unlocked for a bit of time while I'm not there. Normally, the habit is to lock the door. Somebody needs to stop and pick something up or drop something off and can't be there while the door is unlocked and they don't have their own key. I not infrequently make arrangements with them to let the door unlock so they can pop in. They then lock the door behind them and go on their way. Um, whenever I do that, I try to let a note on the inside of the front door, letting anybody coming and going after I step out know what's happening, that, okay, we mean to have the door unlocked. Um, I raised that because on Friday, I had arranged for a, a person who was coming from a distance to pick something up after I had gone for the day and left the door unlocked, had the note on the door. When they came, it was locked. Fortunately, they were able to catch me, and fortunately, we were able to scramble and arrange for them still to get in. But needless to say, the potential is there. It, it worked okay, not a big deal, but the potential is there to have pretty unhappy campers sometimes if you're the person coming from a distance and you can't get in, and then you maybe think that Pastor Tom, that blockhead, which is fair and can tell you, I forget things. Uh, what did he do? He went and locked the door, and, and I didn't. I let it unlock. So uh, please, please, if you come to the front door, and if you find it unlocked when you come in, a good rule of thumb is let it unlocked when you leave. Probably there will be a note inside saying why, but even if not, if you come in, the door is unlocked, probably the safest thing is let it unlocked when you leave, because somebody might have not me even made an arrangement with someone, and they're counting on that being the case. If you come and it's locked, probably again, the safest thing is lock it when you're done. That gets a little dicey maybe uh, because maybe you're the second person coming after I've been there. But to be fair, if you come and the door's locked, you need your key, lock it again. But for sure, if you come and it's unlocked, especially if I've left a note, please do let it unlocked after. And it's easy to do, it's easy to forget and to just use that key without thinking. So. No, no harm, no foul, but it'll just be helpful to not have that happen. And finally, our property guys have done us a nice thing in the bathroom in the elevator hallway by installing a motion sensor switch. So you no longer need to flip on when you go and it'll automatically do its thing. And uh, when you leave, don't worry, it'll still be on for a little while, but it will turn off. I verified that. So just know the bathroom in the elevator hallway is being handled a bit differently. Thank yous have been streaming in from our healthcare professionals for the uh, final note, the gift cards, the small gift cards, and the thank you cards that they've been receiving. So I want to pass those along. There would, of course, be too many to share each, but in general, we are hearing a lot of gratitude from the support that those gifts that you all have made possible to our healthcare professionals have, have made possible. Melanie Wingert, I'm thankful to announce that on Friday, she ended up having a very, very much more minimal surgery. Amputation was not necessary. They were able to uh, remove some of the infected areas, and she will now be treated with both hyperbaric treatment and also a wound vac. And so the hope is that some of these new state-of-the-art techniques may help with what have been persistent problems for her. Lorraine Henninger has a new room number. She is now in room 133 at Fry Village. It is hoped that by mid-March, she will be able to start physical therapy. It's going more slowly than had been hoped, the healing process, but her spirits are good. I had a nice talk with her the other day and uh, not that she doesn't get down or struggle, but she's hanging in there. And again, we, we hope and pray that she'll be getting started with PT by mid-March. Uh, Ray Motter, who continues to be at the home of Craig and Sandra Shade on hospice care, uh, Ray is fading. And again, you never know, none of us knows from day to day, but in general, it would seem like things are progressing for, for Ray there uh, in his hospice time, uh, in this uh, closer to end of life on earth time. So please do continue to keep Ray and Joyce and their family in your thoughts and prayers. 
And uh, Lois Watson, I had another very nice talk with her earlier this morning. And um, she uh, was sitting in her comfortable living room. And uh, so she continues to heal now from home. So we're thankful for that. So uh, we welcome this morning in particular members of and their families, the Girl Scout troop that is sponsored by our congregational family. I'm gonna turn it over now to Nicole who has been faithfully leading that group and ministry. And we're going to join together in observing Girl Scout Sunday today. All righty, good morning. Um, Rachel, I'm gonna share my screen now. All righty, good morning. Today, we will celebrate the powerful ties between Girl Scouting and faith, honoring Girl Scout Service Unit 194. Those troops present today are Troop 10,010, 13,011, 11,856, and Juliet. Raquel? If able, please stand for your Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If able, please continue to stand as the Girl Scouts will say their Girl Scout promise. On my honor, my honor I, will I will try to serve God, God and in my country, country to help people at all times, times and, and to live, live by the Girl, Girl, Scout, Scout, Girl Scout, Scout Law. You may now be seated. Good job. Today is Girl Scout Sunday, which is observed during Girl Scout Week an event recognizing the founding of Girl Scouts on March 12, 1912. This year, we will celebrate 109 years. We would like to honor and thank the Girl Scouts who have courage, confidence, and character to make the world a better place. I will ask them to say hi when I say their name in order for you to see them when honored on Zoom. Addison, Troop 10,010. Hello. Brianna, Troop 10,010. Hello. Christine, Troop 13,011. Eliza, Troop 10,010. Isabel, Troop 10,010. Hi. Chloe, Troop 10,010. Chloe. Uh, Raquel, Juliet. Hi. Riley, Troop 10,010. Hi. And Sophia, Troop 11,856. Hola. These girls represent the leaders of tomorrow. A special thank you to St. John's and the congregation and Pastor Tom for your leadership and support for our Girl Scout troops. Here is a picture from the drive through trunk or treat. St. John's was so kind to let us host to reach out to the children in our community during the pandemic. 80 kids in the area attended the drive through trunk or treat event. We also did a book drive and books from the drive through trunk or treat event were given to the Upper Dolphin Human Service Center to be used as Christmas gifts for the Christmas Express for local children in our area. 
Typically in Girl Scout tradition, we would typically sing a song. This year we decided since by Zoom, we would present the Girl Scout law. I will do my best to be honest and fair. Friendly and helpful. Considered and caring. Courageous and strong. Responsible for what I say and do and to. Respect myself and others. Respect authority. Use resources wisely. Make the world a better place. And, and, be, and be a Girl Scout to every, and be a sister to every Girl Scout. We will now conclude our celebration with a prayer. Dear Father, we know we are your children. We want to serve you faithfully and we want to be willing and quick to do your work. Help us to be friendly and loving and help us to thank you every day for all your gifts to us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you. And even though I told him I wasn't going to do this, I'm just going to jump in here a quick moment before RJ begins our youth-led worship. And again, thank you, Nicole. And thank you, girls. And thank you to your families. Beautiful job in transitioning to a Zoom setting for Girl Scout Sunday. How meaningful and, and how really attractive and showing us what you've been doing. So we are grateful for that partnership that we share. And again, Thank you, especially families who have taken time away from your normal Sunday morning to uh, join us in this way. Welcome and thank you. And uh, now over to RJ Henry, who is going to lead us off. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who brings us out of captivity into freedom, out of the wilderness, into the promised land, out of death, into life. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. Forgive us and give us strength to turn from sin and to serve you in newness of life. Amen. By water and the Holy Spirit, God gives us a new birth, and, the, and through the death of, and resurrection of Jesus, God forgives us all our sins. Almighty God, strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life. Amen.
the measurable grace of Christ Jesus, the rich mercy of God, and the unity of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. O God, by the passion of your blessed Son, you made an instrument of shameful death to be for us the means of life. Grant us so, so to glory in the cross of Christ that we may gladly suffer shame and loss for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Uh, this reading is from Psalm 104. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty. Wrapped in light as with garment, you stretched out the heavens like a tent. You set the beams of your chambers on water. You make your clouds your chariot. You ride on the wings of the wind. You make the winds your messengers. Fire and flame your ministers. You set the earth on its foundations so that, it'll sh so that it shall never be shaken. You cover it with the deep as with garment. The water stood above the mountains as you rebuke the flea. At the sound of your thunder, they take to flight. They rose up to the mountains, ran down to the valleys, to the place that you are appointed for them. You set a boundary that they may not pass so that they might not again cover the earth. You make springs gush forth in the valleys. They flow between the hills, giving drink to every wild animal. The wild asses quench their thirst. By the streams, the birds of the air have their habitation. They sing among the branches. From your lofty abode, you water the mountains. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of your work. You cause the grass to grow for the cattle and plants for the people to use to bring forth food from the earth and wine to gladden the human heart. Oil to make the face shine and bread to strengthen the human heart. The trees of the Lord are watered abundantly, the cedars of Lebanon that he planted. In them, the birds build their nests. The stock has its, has its home in the fir trees. The, mount, the high mounds are for the wild goats. The rocks are a refuge for the conies. You have made the moon to mark the seasons. The sun knows its time for setting. You made darkness and it's, it is night when all the animals of the forest come creeping out. The young lions roar for their prey, seeking their food from God. When the sun rises, they withdraw and lie down in their dens. People go out to their work and to their labor until the evening. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works, and wisdom you have made all, them all. Your earth is full of your creatures, yonder is the sea, great and wide, creeping things in, innumerable are there. Living things, both small and great, there go the ships, and Leviathan that you form to sport in it. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. Who looks on earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to God while I have being. May my meditation be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Let sinners be consumed from the earth and let wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Praise the Lord. That's where the reading ends. I will be reading Matthew 5, verses 1 to 11. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and after he sat down, 
his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness, sake for their, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people reveal you, you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way the persecuted the prophets who were before you. The reading ends here. I will be reading Psalm 148, Praise for God's Universal Glory. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth. You see monsters in all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds. Kings of earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for all his people. Praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. A reading from Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 to 34. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life. What will you eat, or what you will drink, or about your body, what will you wear? Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow, nor reap, nor gather into barns. And your heavenly Father there feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you be be bringing at a single hour to your span of life. And why do you not worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, and neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grasses of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will we not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, what will we eat? Or what will we drink? Or what will we wear? For it is Gentiles who strive for all these things. And indeed, your Heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God, and his righteousness in all these things will be given to you as well. So not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. Here ends the reading.
Miss Lori, I think we're at you. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about, sorry about that. Okay. Come on, Sunny, they're waiting for us. <laughs> That's not Sunny to you, Miss Laurie. Oh, I see that. Hello, friends. And it's time again to do mad math. I'm your teacher, Miss Sunny. And wait a second, oh, my glasses. And I'm looking for my favorite student out there. You know, we're not supposed to have favorites, but we all do. Um, uh, Gerard, are you out there? Yeah. Great! Today we're going to learn how to add with elephants. Miss Sunny, we already learned how to add elephants. Oh, we did? Okay. Um, today we'll learn to add refrigerators. We did refrigerators too, Miss Sunny. When did we do that? Yesterday. Oh. What about badgers? We've done badgers too. Rotten fruit? Yes. Chainsaws? We did chainsaws too. Gas powered and electric? Yes, ma'am. I've got it. Things you shouldn't say to a friend. Did we add those? No. Great. All right. So let's add things we shouldn't say to a friend. Let's say you're having a bad day and your colleague, the science teacher, says hello. You respond and you call him a doofus. When the science teacher objects to being called a doofus, you call him a smelly rotten egg sandwich. Now, we add one insult to another. And what do we get? We get a very annoyed science teacher. Exactly. The science teacher is mad at you. He tells another teacher. He tells the principal, the superintendent, the president of the school board, and one helicopter mom. And what do you get then? One plus one plus four. I'll tell you what you get. A lot of worry to start your school year. That's what you get. Miss Sunny, I don't think you have a right, have a rough start. I think you need to add something else to all that and make it right. You do, eh? Yes, ma'am. A few years back, I was always worrying about tomorrow and what might go wrong. Then I added something to my day that made everything better. Let's see, kid. If you know something that'll take away my worry about what that one helicopter mom could do to me, I would like you to, by all means, tell me. Just add a little Jesus to your day. Jesus, that's it? That's all you need. Spend time with your Jesus and put God first every day. I promise it will add up in the end. Let's pray. Dear God, show us how to make time to add Jesus to our lives every day and help us to always seek you first. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Jesus, who have thunk it? Now let's get back to some mad math. How about if we learn to add with underpants? Okay, Sonny, I think you're good. Thanks, Chelsea, via, via Florida. You did a great job. Everyone should experience outside worship. The church is where we as Christians commonly associate the idea of God and the presence of God. But what better way than to be surrounded by God's creation? It is quite easy for us to make a habit of spending time with God on Sundays, but spending time outside this allotted time is something special. For instance, just outside worship in our own pavilion is something special to me. Now granted, if it's cold and windy outside, that's another story but most of the time it is a nice change up. That is why it is hard for me to imagine why we don't have more members of our congregation coming to Camp Nawakwa. Something special about camp is that it's an escape from reality. There's little to no internet to the point that it's solely you, the other campers and the animals of the forest, all of which were made by God. Camp or any sort of Christian experience outside the church itself creates another extension of your faith family. No matter what, just going outside can give you a connection to God as you explore his creation. Watching the sun rise, the sun set, a shooting star, spotting a rainbow, or watching snow come down from the sky are very special occurrences that we can thank God for. Fresh air and the sound of nature, nature is a perfect combo for us to relax and get closer to God.
When choosing the readings for today, as much as the book of Genesis would have covered God's creation rather well, I found that exploring readings praising God and his creation outside of such a commonly known story was important. The book of Psalm is rather diverse, and I found that chapters 104 and 148 were both valuable readings that were almost like poetry in the Bible. In the Psalms, God gets compared to a rock, a hiding place, a king, a shepherd, light, and a, a song, a judge, a healer, a teacher, and among others. All of these help us understand God's nature and relationship to us. Both of these Psalm readings are pretty in the fact that they highlight God's work. Of course, we knew of God's work in the book of Genesis, but there's far more to expand upon. Specifically, I enjoy reading Psalm 104, verses 19 to 20, which says, You have made the moon to mark the seasons. The sun knows it's time for setting. You make the darkness, and it is night, when all the animals of the forest come creeping. And the glory of God's creation continues in Psalm 148, verses 9 through 10. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds. As Gary read in verses one through 10 of Matthew chapter five, Jesus was in God's creation on the mountain when he delivered the Beatitudes. He blessed the merciful, the meek, the peaceful, etc. By the end of his teachings to the disciples, you come to understand that no matter our struggles or our faith journey, God is with us. This part of the Bible is a reminder that with praise comes blessings. If we praise God like how we praise his creation in Psalm and Genesis, we will be blessed because we praise him and have faith. The final reading, Matthew 6, verses 25 through 34, shows how we don't need to worry as much as we do. There are so many things that can consume our minds that we think about, but everything will be okay with the help of God. For a full week at Camp Nawakwa, there's no internet, no news, no expectations imposed upon you, and no to-do list. It's a great escape from reality and a happy place. Not everyone's an outdoorsy kind of person, so maybe this happy place is at a library, a late night car ride, or a vacation. The point is everyone should have a happy place, and it could very well be outside in God's creation if you give it a chance. As Jesus said here in verse 34, so do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worry of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. The message is so simple, yet somehow we struggle with taking a pause and trusting in God. One of our biggest strengths, but also one of our biggest downfalls as humans is that we're constantly thinking. I've once heard that you can only hear God when you clear your mind. But the struggle with that is that we as humans are incapable of clearing our minds. We have too many distractions, ideas, and problems. We fill our minds with doubts and worries and occupy our time with the same schedule over and over again. We get so consumed with the ordinary that we don't explore outside of our bubble, which is nature. For no matter what work occupies our time, God's work will always outshine ours. Don't distract yourself. Focus on you and your relationships in life right now. Make sure to go outside into the great unknown of God's creation. Explore the unknown, watch a sunset and a sunrise this week. Go for a car ride and admire nature. Read the Bible outside when it's warmer. I encourage all of you to consider attending more outdoor ministry and going outside for fresh air more often. Lastly, remember Jesus's words in the last verse of Matthew chapter six. Do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worry of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. For today was God's day of rest after his creation of the world, so we shall rest as well. Amen. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son. Our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born by the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He, he descended, descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He, 
he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. This means that I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father eternity, and also a true human being born by the of the Virgin Mary is my Lord. He has redeemed me, a lost and condemned human being. He was purchased and freed me all my sins from death and from the power of the devil, not gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death. He has done all this in order that I may belong to him, live under him in his kingdom and serve him in eternal righteousness, innocence and blessedness. Just as he risen from the dead and lives and rules eternally, this is most certainly true.
relying on the promises for relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. Your gift of grace is all, for all people. Give confident faith to all the baptized that may be, that may follow your wholeheartedly. Give new believers joy in our promises. Give hope and courage to those who suffer for their faith. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. All the ends of the earth worship you, from galaxies to microorganisms. Preserve your creation. Teach humanity to wonder at your works and enjoy in you tending to creation's well-being. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You rule over nations. Rise up, advocates for peace and justice within and between nations. Give life where hope seems dead. Call into existence new realities we cannot even imagine. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In Jesus, you join humanity in suffering and death. Reveal to all the death of your love shown on the cross. Accompany all who suffer in the body, mind, and spirit. Restore all who are sick or grieving. Bring benediction for victims of injustice, exploitations, and oppression, especially Daryl, Warren, Lorraine, Marzette, Cora, Joyce, Ray, Nicholas, Robert, Lois, and whoever we name aloud or in silence. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You made Abraham and Sarah the ancestors of a multitude of nations. Bless grandparents, parents, and foster parents, and the children who look to them for care and guidance. Console those who deal with inf infraternity, parents who have entrusted their children to adoption, and children logging to adopted. Equip ministers and services to families. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We await the day of Christ's coming in glory. Lead us by example of all the saints whom you have called to take up their cross and follow you, that together we may find our lives in you. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our, our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty the wisdom and power of Christ Jesus and the light of the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.
Go in peace, remember the poor. Thanks be to God. I again want to thank uh, the Girl Scouts and their families for being present this morning with us as we observe Girl Scouts Sunday. And of course, Nicole, who does such a great job faithfully month after month, year after year in leading and in leading this celebration this morning. And of course, all of our youth worship leaders for sharing their gifts. Uh, we all know that uh, that's a pretty challenging thing, you know, being up in front of people, including a crowd of people in Zoom fashion. Uh, and so they have uh, done good and faithful work. Um, thanks especially to Gracie for sharing the primary word of the morning in the sermon. And uh, her point is well taken for all of us in these COVID times about the need to be connecting with God and not forgetting about the beauty of that creation everywhere, but particularly in outdoor ministry, some really great things happen there. And it just so happens that Gracie is a great person to talk with about that. And her mom, Amy, is a great person and, and the person, in fact, to see about signing up and registering in such details. So please, uh, please do that. And uh, thank you, of course, to, to Judy and to Miss Laurie for, for sharing their participation this morning. Please, if you're able, if you have time, unmute and uh, let's feel free to hang out and, and share. Uh, I realize sometimes, you know, we need to get running on to the next thing. No problem with that. But if you have a few minutes to, uh, to spare, uh, the youth included, please go ahead and let's open the floor, please. Maybe first.